and welcome or welcome back to my channel and welcome to another video. My name is Shalini and I make videos about tech, data science, professional development advice, and more. A few weeks ago I talked about some resources on how to learn SQL, but today I'm going to be doing a brief overview on some basic SQL concepts that you will definitely be using if you're working with data science. SQL basics in 10 minutes. Let's go! So SQL or SQL, I've heard it both ways, is a very common language that data scientists use. SQL stands for Structured Query Language, and with SQL you define queries, and those queries help you get information from a database. So a SQL query has a very basic structure with certain keywords like this. The output of a SQL query is a table with rows and columns. With a lot of the keywords in the query, we will be doing things with the rows and columns in order to try and get certain things out of the data. Every SQL query also ends with a semicolon, so in all the queries that I'll be writing out today, you'll always see me put a semicolon at the end. For today, I'm going to be using a data set with the Billboard Top 100 songs from the 1900s until the 2000s to demonstrate some of these SQL concepts. So let's get into the keywords. The first two keywords that you will use in every SQL query are select and from. For select, you list out the columns that you want to include in the output of your query. For the from keyword, you list out the table that these columns come from. Both of these keywords are necessary to put in your SQL query. If you don't put them in, your query won't run. For example, let's say that we want to look at the year an artist was on the charts. We could select the year and the artist column with our select keyword and we can use our from keyword to show what table we are getting these columns from. When we run this, we end up getting the two columns that we want as well as all the rows that are in our table. As another example, if we wanted to select all of the columns, we could use an asterisk instead of typing out all of the column names. So select and from are keywords that you have to have in your query and they have to be in that order too. From can't come before select. The next keywords I'll be talking about are optional, but you may want to use them or certain combinations of them based on what you want to get from your data. So the next keyword is limit, and this tells us how many rows we want to output. If we don't specify this keyword in our query, all of the rows will be outputted. Let's say that we only wanted to see the first 10 rows of our data, just to get a sense of what it looks like. We could run this query with a limit 10 at the end. And as a result, we get only the first 10 rows of our data set. This is a really good keyword to just get a sense of what your data looks like. Especially if you have a large data set, you don't want to be waiting a long time for the results to output. The next keyword is where, which tells us how to filter our data. We can write a condition after the where keyword, which will only output the rows or observations that satisfy that condition. To write out the conditions, we can use different operators. In SQL, we have a bunch of different operators. For example, the equal sign, which means equal to. We have these two operators, which mean not equal. We, of course, have greater than or less than. And then we also have greater than or equals to and less than or equals to. Jumping to our data set, let's say that we only want to look at observations that happened after 2008. We could start with our select and from, and then add in our where condition, where the year is greater than 2008, because we want all observations that happen after 2008. So in this condition, we take the column that we want our condition to be applied to, and then we use an operator, in this case, greater than, which will get all the rows where the year is greater than 2008. And in our results, we can see the year is in fact greater than 2008. We can also specify multiple conditions with our where keyword. And we can do this by using and or or. So for example, with our data, maybe we want to look at observations where the year is between 2008 and 2013. This would mean that we want years that are above 2008, but below 2013 we could do a query like this. So here we have our first condition, then we have an and, 
and then we have our second condition. Our next keyword is order by, which is used to sort our data. So after using this keyword in our query, we can specify a column or multiple columns that we want to sort our data by. For example, if we wanted to sort our data in alphabetical order by the song name, we would do something like this. We can see that the song name is now in alphabetical order. By default, SQL sorts columns in ascending order. If we wanted to sort in descending order, we can do this by adding D, E, S, C for descending after the column name. And here we see a reverse alphabetical order for the song name. We can also sort by multiple columns by listing out different columns and separating them by a comma. SQL will go in the order you specify the columns and sort based on that. For example, with our data, if we wanted to sort by the artist and then within each artist sort by song name, we would do something like this we see that all the artists are in alphabetical order, and then within a specific artist, all the songs are also in alphabetical order. Another important concept is aggregate functions. With an aggregate, before we produce an output, we compute a summary of some arithmetic expression. For example, we can use sum, count, min, max, or average. Jumping to our data set, if we wanted to find the earliest year in our data, we could use the min aggregate function and we could do something like min of year which would get the minimum year in our data set and here we see that the minimum year is 1956. So with this example we are looking at an aggregate of the whole data set. What if we wanted to find the earliest year for each artist, the earliest year that each artist was on the charts? How can we look at aggregates for each category? So our next keyword is group by and it helps us do exactly this. With group by, we specify columns that we want to group on and then SQL will partition the table into groups with the same group by column values. Then an aggregate result will be produced for each of the groups. So let's say we want to find the earliest year that an artist was on the charts. So ideally in our results, we would have a column with the artist name and then we would have the minimum earliest year that they were on the charts. So in this case, we would want to group by artist because we want to find the minimum year within each of the artist groups in our data. In our select statement, we can select the artist since we are grouping by that and we want to know that. And then the other component is our aggregate. Since we want the earliest year for each artist, we can use the min function. And then we get each artist and the earliest year that they were on the billboard charts. So related to the group by keyword is the having keyword. So having is very similar to the where keyword that I talked about earlier because it's used for filtering, but having can only be used with group by. Following from the previous example, maybe we only want to look at artists that appeared on the charts for the first time before 2000. So we can add our having keyword and then specify a condition for our groups. So we want the minimum year to be before 2000. So we can do min year is less than 2000. And we get our results. We get all the artists and the respective years, all of which are before 2000. So those are a few basic SQL keywords that you will likely be using all the time if you are writing SQL queries. The best way to get familiar with these keywords and SQL in general is to practice writing queries and running them. So definitely try them out. Thanks for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe for more videos and I'll see you all in my next one. Bye.